Good evening, good evening. Can you imagine that it has been one solid month since we have met? And here, there's so many of you here with us. And again, my name is Alicia Thompson. I serve as the Associate Vice President of Fund Development at the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute. On an afternoon, an evening like this, you could have been doing anything, but we are so pleased that you chose to spend at least one hour of your time here with us. I can tell you it's going to be very exciting this evening. As a reminder, we encourage you to sit with your backs to the wall. And of course, the chat function has been enabled. So feel free anytime during the presentation, send your questions, send your comments. And please, if you are alumni of the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute, drop your name, drop your program. Let us know what year you attended. So without further ado, I now invite Mrs. Gayla Wallace. She is the assistant manager at the Freeport campus and she will give us the welcome. Good evening. Thank you to our always great moderator, ABP Alicia Thompson. I'm delighted to be here with you this evening. As she stated, this is a very good program. I am ecstatic to be able to officially welcome you. So I just wanna say an official welcome again to our host, ABP Alicia Thompson. Also joining us this evening, I see we have our Associate Vice President of the Northern Campus, Ms. Veronica Cauley. And if we could just give everybody a virtual wave when, you know, when I identify. Also, I wanna say a special welcome to our guest speaker tonight, Monique Clinton. Also, BTVI other alumni who are joining us this evening, friends, family, staff, guests, and anyone that you've invited to come here tonight. We are excited to have you and we hope that you enjoy the program. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And I do trust that you all feel welcomed at this point. So there's always something exciting happening at BTVI. And if you were tuned into the news, then you would know that on the 20th of September, we made a very special announcement. That announcement was the appointment of our first vice president. We're always happy to see that there's strengthening of the executive team, and of course, our Vice President of Academic Affairs is Dr. Linda Davis. Dr. Davis comes to us with a whole lot of experience and definitely a whole lot of qualifications. And she has served at very senior levels in higher education for over 20 years. Her most recent posting was at the University of the Bahamas as provost and Dr. Davis has worked throughout the Bahamas, as well as the United States. In the words of our president, Dr. Robertson, we are incredibly fortunate to have Dr. Davis serve as a part of the BTVI community. And without any further ado, I would now invite Dr. Linda Davis, our VP of Academic Affairs, to give us some remarks. Dr. Davis. Good night, and thank you so much uh, for your very warm uh, welcome. I've been really um, uh, feeling quite overwhelmed by the warmth of the of the embrace that the BTVI family has given to me. AVV Thompson, thank you for the opportunity to greet everyone at what I think is a really fabulous event. You know, as I'm trying to familiarize myself with my new institutional home, BTVI, reading more about this event in particular and the work being done through your office, ABB Thompson. I've been truly impressed, very impressed by the alums that have passed through the doors. Indeed, I think that perhaps BTVI is one of the best, best kept secrets of our Bahama land, perhaps. And this um, BTVI Distinguished Alumni uh, uh, Speaker Series provides, I think, an excellent opportunity to showcase the foundation that BTVI has given some very amazing people. 
raising the visibility of BPVI, showcasing uh, career possibilities, um, role models. Our BTVI alums are the best ambassadors. And so you don't need to hear, uh, hear from me. Uh, I'm advised that the first speaker was Ryan Bethel in July, followed by Ismail Davis Delancey in August. And now, today we have, um, or this evening, we have Monique uh, Glinton. What an amazing journey she has had. And so I leave the program to her to tell her story and to inspire us all. Thank you again, and do enjoy the evening's event, BTVI, Discover the Possibilities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Davis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure again to have you here with us. Okay, so without further ado, now we know why we're here. And as Dr. Davis would have said, we do have an impressive group of alum who have passed through our doors. And this evening, we are going to hear from one of those persons. So this evening, I'm going to tell you a little bit. Now I'm gonna introduce our speaker for this evening, Monique Glinton. Monique Glinton was born in Nassau as the oldest child of Lindy and Anna May Burroughs. There were three children. Her primary and secondary education was all completed at Catholic institutions, including Xavier Primary and St. Augustine's College High School in Nassau. She is a graduate of Grand Bahama Catholic High School in Freeport, Grand Bahama. After high school, she moved back to Nassau where she continued her education at what is now the University of the Bahamas and started work at the Royal Bank of Canada. What started in 1987 as a job of necessity as a teller, grew her professionally from the branch to private banking, where she concluded her Royal Bank of Canada career as a private banking relationship manager in 2003, but not before collecting multiple top performer awards and an associate's degree in economics and finance, and of course, starting a family. Mrs. Glinton always fed her passion for working with her hands, even as she grew her career, her family, and worked on her traditional education. Initially, she baked, cooked, sewed, and taught herself many home-based crafts. Eventually, she took an uncommon step for a female financial professional by enrolling in the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute to learn carpentry, of all things, carpentry. She would go on from the bank to lead a successful business services company, partially owned her family from 2004 to 2017. During that time, she started Customs Creations 242, where she produces wooden and other custom gifts that delight hundreds of clients who recognize that she is the provider of choice when they need something that is custom made for you when ordinary just won't do. Mrs. Glinton is married to Keith Glinton, and together they have four children and one grandson. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, I'm going to now invite Mrs. Monique Clinton to give a presentation. Thank you so much, Mrs. Thompson. Thank you so much, BTVI, for having me. It is truly my pleasure to be here tonight to share with you how I transitioned from pumps to power tools. My story starts at home with my parents and my younger siblings. We, my siblings and I grew up in a traditional home with both of our parents working in the banking field. But not only were they bankers in my eyes, they were the most hardworking people I knew. I mean, they never stopped working which typically meant that we, my sister and I, because my brother was much younger, always had to be busy ourselves. My mom was the epitome of the perfect homemaker. And even though she worked 
full time, she still came home every night to make a homemade delicious meal. Growing up, we didn't know anything about fast food or eating out because it was just not something that we did. But fortunately, she was an excellent cook. She baked cakes every Sunday as my father had a serious sweet tooth, he still has. And he looked forward to those desserts every Sunday after Sunday dinner. She made bread, jams, jellies. She was a seamstress, sewing all of our school uniforms, church dresses. And I used to love to sit with her when I was younger in her sewing room when she would sew, just so that I could hoard all of the scraps that she had or that she allowed me to have so that I could make clothes for the dolls that I had. Wherever my mom was doing and whatever she was doing, I wanted to be a part of it. And so on weekends, when she would prepare to iron our school uniforms, it was my job to iron the pillowcases and daddy's hankies. Now, I don't know of anybody else who ironed pillowcases. I don't even know if that was a thing. I don't know if it was a necessity. I know definitely it's not something that I do now, but that was my job every single weekend, probably because that was her way of teaching me how to iron. My father, on the other hand, he was the perfect provider and protector, always um, on almost able to do anything with his hands. He knew how to operate, fix a boat. He was Mr. Fix-It in our home. And anything that needed fixing, just call daddy, he would fix it. He would go out fishing on the weekends to ensure that we always had a supply, a fresh supply of fish, conch, and crawfish whenever it was in season. And it was doing during this period when I was growing up that I was introduced to DIY. I remember our weekends when mommy would make guava jam. We were always there to stir the pot so the jam didn't burn. And it was those weekends when she made the jam that she would also make homemade bread and rolls because nothing goes better with warm jam than freshly made homemade bread straight out of the oven. Sometimes those weekends included yard work. That would mean that we were all involved in cleaning the yard. My father would cut the grass, my mom would rake the leaves, and my sister and I would put these leaves in garbage bags. Everything we did, we did together as a family. We lived in Nassau until I was in the ninth grade, and ninth grade at SAC, and then we moved to Freeport because my father was transferred to Freeport to establish the bank first home, which is now Fidelity Bank. So he went there, started the bank as bank manager. Um, and during that time, while I was in school, I was always a strong academic student. So after I graduated high school at that time, which was Grand Bahama Catholic High, I came back to Nassau to further my education at what was College of the Bahamas. And like many young people, I wasn't sure what I wanted to study. There were times when I wanted to be a doctor, thought about being a pediatrician. Then I wanted to study education, primary education. But I decided finally in my first semester to study business and focused on economics and finance. But growing up, I had lived a sheltered life with my parents and wasn't prepared for the freedom that came with living on the dorms nor was I prepared for the smart talking young man that came into my life. So just over a year into college, I found out that I was pregnant. So now I had a child and I needed a job. I applied for many jobs and was super thankful that I got one at Royal Bank of Canada in January of 1988. But I was not a quitter, didn't come from a family of quitters. So I had to find my way back to College of the Bahamas to complete my degree. I worked full-time as a teller, and in the evenings I went to school, eventually graduating with my associate's degree in economics and finance, because in those days, College of the Bahamas didn't offer the bachelor's degree. But I worked my way up from teller at Bain Victoria branch to relationship manager at Royal Bank Private Banking. And as mentioned in my bio, during my time at the bank, I won numerous awards. I was a royal performer at the branch level, where I was one of two Bahamians that was awarded a seven-day Caribbean cruise. This is um, among all the branches in, for Royal Bank. And then at the private banking branch, I moved my way from deposit clerk to account officer, 
having competed for and receiving a position that sent me to Canada for nine months to learn French and work in the private banking office in Montreal. While there in Canada, of course, I studied French. That's what I was there for. I also studied for my Canadian securities course. And by the time that I returned to Nassau, I was fluent in French and had successfully completed my Canadian securities exam. I quickly moved from account officer to relationship manager, where I had my own portfolio of high net worth French speaking clients. And then in 2002, I was ranked in the top 10 of Royal, ba Royal Bank of Canada private banking relationship managers in the world. And we were awarded a week long trip to San Francisco. During my time at the bank, I never stopped learning. I studied Spanish, I took computer classes, financial planning classes, cake decorating classes. I was an avid learner because it was one thing that my parents, my mom in particular, always instilled in us. It was to get an education, learn whatever you can, because knowledge is something no one can ever take from you. So anytime the bank offered a class, I was there, sign me up, I'll take the class. But outside of my learning, I was also busy doing a lot of other things. I sold stockings to the ladies in the bank. Um, on a visit to Ecuador, I came back with two boxes of beautiful handmade leather handbags that I sold to the ladies in the bank. I did bookkeeping jobs. But if my husband were to tell the story, he would say that all I did was get in the way when there was work being done around the house. It was just that it was hard for me to sit still and not do anything. Doing things with my hands became natural to me. From my mom, I learned how to cook, bake, make jams, jellies, and so I made my girls school clothes, church clothes, Halloween costumes. To this day, I still make my grandson his Halloween costumes. I didn't quite master the bread making part until last year during the pandemic when there was a shortage of bread and I had no other choice but to learn to make the bread. But my passion for creating and working with my hands went a lot deeper than what my mom taught me. I was interested in how things were done in the house. I was interested when my husband was installing blinds. I wanted to be there. Hey, can I help? In fact, let me do the next one. When he would get tradesmen to come in and, and do work around the house, I wanted to see what was doing. I wanted to learn. I wanted to see how they did things. And I remember one year we were having some work done. Um, I asked the carpenter, what would it cost to create a pergola? Because I wanted this outdoor room. I had in my mind what I wanted, a, a nice picnic table, a pergola with the lights in the um, rafters, an outdoor kitchen, rustic, with complete with running water. I knew what I wanted. And when he told me the price of the pergola alone, just the labor for the pergola, I know, okay, no way I'm having this outdoor room. It's not happening. But there I was, this petite size four heels or pump wearing female wishing that I was as strong and as capable of those men so that I could go out and build, go out there, build my own pergola and create my own outdoor room. And lo and behold, one day while looking for something different to do, I came across an offering that BTBI had their personal development course in carpentry. I was so excited. I talked my then 13 year old son into going with me. And in 10 weeks on Saturdays, my son and I created a 12 foot long picnic table that was the gathering point for my family for nearly a decade. I continued my work at the bank and then later at the family business, but it was that first picnic table that I made with my own hands that my family was still actually using that lit a fire in me. The only problem was most of the cutting was with power tools and I still needed someone to do it because I was deathly afraid of power tools. I had started to become more comfortable over time with using some of the smaller drills but I knew that I could do so much more if I could get over my fear of this real power tools. So I decided that I was gonna do something crazy. By now I was headed to 50. 
My husband and I had four adult children. Our last was in her senior year at high school and we were expecting our first grandchild. I had already been recognized um, among the top bankers in the Bahamas and the world for Royal Bank. Successfully running a family business, a part of which had an operation in the US. What more could I possibly want? What? But I wanted to build things. I wanted to create. I wanted to become a part carpenter. I wanted to do woodwork. And so my husband, who was always so supportive of all of my crazy ideas, supported me going to BTDI to study carpentry. And I remember that first day, that first day I walked into that class, I was so nervous. Class started at 8 a.m. And as I was a few minutes late, I sat in the back of the class and quietly began to take notes. On the first break, the instructor comes over to me and he asks, are you sure you're in the right class? And I'm like, oh gosh, maybe I'm not in the right class. Maybe this is carpentry two. I'm supposed to be in carpentry one. So I asked, well, is this carpentry one? He said, yes. Well, of course I'm in the right class. I am signed up for carpentry one. But you see, I was in this typical student. Not only was I the only female in this class, I was definitely the oldest. Remember, I'm hitting 50. I'm going to become a grandmother. And outside of myself, the oldest of these students was 19, a year or two older than my own youngest child. But it was in that class, that Carpentry One class, where I learned how to safely and properly use all of the tools. And by the end of the semester, I was no longer afraid of power tools and nothing was gonna stop me from doing woodwork or becoming a carpenter. That year for Christmas, I told my husband, don't buy me any shoes. I don't want any bags. Don't get me any jewelry. I want power tools. Get me all the tools, all of them. And the highlight of those tools was my DeWalt, DeWalt table saw, the same saw that the professional carpenters took on job sites. I had one of those. I was armed, I was ready to build. Anyone could have asked me to build anything and I was willing to build it just to pull out my tools. So the following year, we're going into Valentine's Day season. I wanted to do something special for my husband. This is 2015. And being prompted by the gift baskets that I saw being sold during the season, I started to wonder what the male version of a gift basket would look like. And I thought, what if I built him a box? Because now remember, I just gotten this saw. I wanted any opportunity to pull that baby out and turn it on. I said, I'll build him a box. I'll call it a man box. I'll fill it with all of his treats, nail it shut, and replace the ribbon on a bow that's used on a gift basket with twine and a pry bar, a pry bar that he has to use to open the box to give this manly feel. I was so excited. I called my sister, I called my daughter and I said, listen, I know you guys were talking about a gift basket, but let me build a box. And they were like, okay, okay, all right. You wanna build a box, build a box. My husband's man box, that first man box was a hit. The guys loved it. So a few weeks later, my sister referred me on Facebook to someone who was looking for a unique gift for a man. And that was the start of my business, Custom Creations 242. With the first sale of that man box under my belt, I felt confident enough to offer it for Father's Day with hopes of selling 25 man boxes. But that year, that first year, we sold over 100 man boxes. My man boxes have led me to build custom made furniture, including the Adirondack chairs that are so popular in the Bahamas with one being built that I built out of deconstructed pallet wood being recognized by a US tool company on their Instagram and Facebook pages. With the man box came other gifts boxes that I offered. I remember um, a customer came to me, she had just purchased, or she had purchased a man box during the first offering. And she came to me and she said, we're doing something for the wine. Um, we want to do something unique. And I was thinking about a wine box. Can you create a wine box? And I'm like, well, I've never created one, but I know I can do it. 
She said, okay. So I came home, Googled the dimensions of a wine box, created a template, sent it to her, and she said, yes, that's what we want. This is Saturday. We need a hundred and we need them by Friday. And I was like, wow. So that Monday, they confirmed, I received the deposit for the um, payment, and I went and purchased the wood that I needed. And from Tuesday to Thursday night, in fact, Friday morning, we were, I was cutting, we were building, we were sanding, we were painting, putting boxes together. And that Friday morning, we delivered 100 completely packaged personalized wine boxes to the bank for their private banking clients. Today, custom creations that started as a wooden box company now sells products for all occasions. So when customers require something handmade for you when ordinary just won't do, call custom creations 242. As I wrap up, and thank you so much for listening to my story. Here are a few lessons that I would like to leave with each of you. Life may throw you a curveball, but you need to stay in the race and persevere to overcome your challenges. Getting pregnant while I was in college wasn't the end of the world for me. I worked even harder. I was still able to complete my education have a successful banking career, win numerous awards, create a wonderful family, and start a successful business. Tend your fields by day. Do not let your hands be idle at night because you do not know which one will work out for you. For most of my life, I worked full time, but in the evenings and weekends, I was developing my gifts and talents. When I started my business in 2015, I was still working full-time in our family business. But in, on the side, in the evenings and on the weekends, I was building my brand. And it wasn't until we closed those doors in 2017 that I went full-time into Custom Creations 242. When you become discouraged or afraid, look for examples to encourage you. When I was toying with the idea of going to BTI to study carpentry, I had so many doubts. I mean, I was older, or I thought I was old. I was a female wanting to go into a male-dominated field. I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to do it. I wouldn't be successful. I had so many doubts, and there were so many times that I almost changed my mind. But then I remembered my father. My father who had worked his way up in the bank to become a branch manager. And after a few years of banking in Freeport, he decided he wanted a change and became a commercial fisherman owning a fleet of boats. He then moved on to becoming a tugboat captain, guiding the container ships into the Freeport Harbor. And after getting numerous jobs offers that he was not qualified for because he didn't have an international license, he decided at the age of 57, 57, to go to a maritime school in Florida for a license that would allow him to start a new career at nearly 60. And at 60 years old, my father was piloting a boat while towing another one from Florida to Africa, a 28 day journey on the sea. There was no reason for me not to go to BTBI. Do not despise what may appear to be small things. That professional development class I took with my son at BTI years ago, when he was just a young boy, that changed my life. It lit a fire inside of me that I didn't know existed. And it gave me the courage to go out there and do anything that I wanted to do. You know how sometimes they say, you can do anything, you put your mind to it. Once you put your mind to it, but you need to put your mind to it. You need to go out there and get the courage to put your mind to it, to go out there and do it. And that class gave me all the courage that I needed to go out there and succeed in what I'm doing now. To win, to win, you must be able to adapt to a changing environment. March of 2020, last year, was the change in our world as we all knew it. The world just stopped. Every country, including ours, was on some sort of lockdown. Lockdowns that affected so many businesses. 
For mine, the giving seasons were always a large part of my business. Valentine's Day, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and that Sunday, March 15th, when the Prime Minister announced that schools would be closed on Monday was the beginning of so many changes that year. My husband and I had just come back from shopping for the Easter season, and now we were going into lockdowns. It meant no Easter caddies, no Mother's Day boxes. But what also happened that year was masks were mandated and the prime minister restricted the importation of masks to allow the industry of mask making to develop. So I adapted. And what started as me making masks to protect my family developed into a business where I was making masks in large quantities for business establishments to the point where I needed to enlist the help of my kids. We were cutting, sewing, customizing, packaging masks in such large quantities that I wondered we'd ever rise above water. So what should have been my worst year last year for my business was actually one of my best because I was able to adapt. Always be willing to learn something new. As I mentioned, we, will, we all know that 2020 was a difficult year. So many people lost jobs and my son was one of them. But being home, he realized how many people like him must be home using the AC because it was so hot. So he decided he would reach out to an AC technician that did some work for us before. And he asked him if he could become his apprentice. I said, yes. And so my son started learning how to install and service ductless units. Today, my son is enrolled in his second semester at BTVI studying AC and refrigeration while still successfully installing and servicing ductless units. And to make a point to learn something useful. When I was preparing for this session today, my mom told me, she said, now make sure you wear something professional and get your makeup done. You're gonna go on there, you need to make sure that you look right. I had gotten my makeup done two weeks ago to take the photos for the flyer. And I remember my makeup artist mentioning that she offered to take, offered makeup classes. So I reached out and I said, hey, I have to get my makeup done for this session that I'm doing. Um, can I take a class and do my makeup then? So she said, sure. So today, this morning, I took her makeup class, her three hour makeup class, and I successfully did my own makeup. Thank you so much, Crystal Major from Major's Makeup. She did an excellent job. BTBI prepares you with essential skills that are needed regardless of the state of the economy. People have been building things well before banks existed and they will continue to build things, repair and have installations done. ETVI training, the confidence it brings in what you can do, combined with a love for people will translate into a growing enterprise for you. Custom Creations now makes soaps, candles, straw bags, and, I, and can customize almost anything you can think of. I help people celebrate almost every holiday or life-changing event because BTVI gave me the confidence that I can make something valuable for others. And finally, life is people. Do it with the people who support you. I am blessed, so blessed that my husband, my children, family support me and I support them. You may not have supporters today, but you can start a team of supporters by supporting someone else in their dreams, even if it's just an encouraging word. As you support, you attract support. BTVI has been an enabler for me, doing so much more than I ever expected it to do. And one of my most recent calls was to supply Bahamian products for the Bahamian embassy in Brussels in Europe. In Europe. And it may sound like a dream to me, it did to you, it did to me at, um, when I first got that call, but because of what I learned at BTVI, that's now my reality. So I say to you, stay, learn, commit, support the BTVI experience. And I hope to be present years from now to hear you tell how your reality 
has been exceedingly and abundantly more than you thought, dreamt, or imagined, largely in part of BTVI. Thank you again so much for having me. And I'm open for any questions if there are any now. Thank you so much. That is powerful. That was powerful. I tell you, AVP Collie, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. I am minded, AVP Collie. Um, let's tell Dr. Davis, stand tomorrow. We ain't going to be coming to BDVI no more. We're going to enroll. I think I see the PDC coordinator. Yeah. We're going to enroll in one carpentry class. AVP Collie, let's send a message to Dr. Let's send a message to Dr. Davis. Okay? Because, um, this is, this is, please, please enter any questions that you may have. Listen, Monique, I remember you. I remember you. We worked together um, at Bye -bye. RBC. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking into that uh, branch. Monique was always, very, if you think she's beautiful now, she was always very pretty. And she was always a little petite person. But there was one thing that I knew about her. Oh, she was a hard worker. One of the other things we knew that anything you wanted that creative that you wanted done, call Monique. Monique could make something out of nothing. And so my question to you then, Monique, you were at the top of your game. I remember you were one of the best bankers that I knew. How do you move from working in the bank to doing this stuff with your hands? I mean, I know like I don't think my mom was going to be really pleased if I said to her one day, listen, I, I, I'm leaving and I'm going to do carpentry. So tell us a little bit more about that. You know, like I said, it was always, I was always creative. I always wanted to create and I was never afraid of doing anything. But I think for me, I, I wanted to be able to do things that, you know, might have been too expensive to create. So it really was that one time when I asked the carpenter, how much would it cost to build a pergola? I wasn't even asking him to create the whole room, just the pergola, just the four beams with the thing rafters across. And when he told me that, I was like, wow. But you know what? No, I need to learn how to do this myself because they're th I just, I'm just starting with what I want. I just wanted that, that was just the beginning. You know, so I mean, I, I was never afraid to do things. Like you said, I was always one, if, I always loved to decorate. So whenever the, anyone in the bank said, oh, we needed to decorate for, I remember it was quincentennial when we were going into the 2000 and, and I, I was there, I wanted to be able to, to do everything. And I was always involved. Um, so it, it, it became easy for me, but it was that conversation. I think if he had said, you know what, I'll do it for you for free, I probably would not have been here. But it was that one obstacle where he said, and, and like I said, it, that was just the pergola. That was not even the rest of the room that I was trying to create. And I'm like, you know what, no, I need to do this myself. Mm -mm. So to this day, I, another thing I forgot to, to say, I remember BTVI, when you go to school at BTVI, you have to wear uniforms. You know, the carpentries, you wear the khaki, the plumbers, I think they wore blue. Auto mechanics wore a different color. And after I um, settled in the class and the teacher mentioned what he needed, what you needed to wear or what you needed, uniform is one of them. So. I went and I bought my uniform. I had my tool belt. And the first day that I wore that, my daughters burst out laughing. She's like, my oldest daughter, she's like, oh my gosh, look at Papina, Papina the builder. <laughs> but you know what? I, I was just so excited. I just wanted to go to school. I wasn't late anymore after that. And um, I just continued with it in my khaki uniform with my tool belt on my waist. I have a question. Lady Glinton, how did you manage with all that heavy wood? Well, um, fortunately, like I said, I had a powerful tool, um, the saw, and that first box, I remember now, I was building this box. My husband couldn't know because it was a gift for him. And I was like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna cut this sheet of plywood? I know I need to cut it. I mean, it's a whole sheet of plywood, a plywood sheet of plywood. 
is four feet by eight feet. So I had to enlist again, my son, my, I, whenever I need things done, they're my people. My kids are my people. I enlisted him. I'm like, hey, I need you to help me cut this wood to a size where I can maneuver it into the saw. So he helped me with that and the rest was history. So okay. to this day, whenever I start and I go now and I have to do something, I always will need a helper to help me probably lift the wood. They're not going to cut. Well, actually, no, I've taught my husband now how to use the tools. So, <laughs> so um, but other than that, no, you don't touch my tools. I just need you to lift the wood, that's all. I have another question. Monique, how does it feel to be the family's very own Barbina? Uh, well, listen, anything that needs to be done, they call me. My sister, if her toilet is not working, she'll be like, hey sis, you think you could come and check my toilet? I think it's clogged or my sink is clogged. I am literally the DIYer for her and my family. So, I mean, I enjoy it. It's truly something that I enjoy. When I know that, you know, simple things, the toilet is leaking and all I need to do is just uh, maybe repair the flap or change the, the pipe, you know? I, I it's something that I truly enjoy being able to do those things myself and say that I did it. Hey, girl power. <laughs> okay, I have another comment. Inspiring story. What advice would you give to someone who's nearing retirement, but who doesn't know what skills to develop for retirement survival? I would say to think about what it is that you enjoy doing. Like I said, for me, I always enjoyed working with my hands. So if you are an academic and, you know, maybe you like to write, then, you know, look at writing or, you know, offering yourself in that service. But you have to know what it is that you want to do. Not everyone is going to be good at working with their hands and not everybody wants to work with their hands. There are some people who are, you know, thinkers. My husband is a thinker. So when he retires, he needs his own office so that he can think and he can write and he can do the things that he enjoys. So my advice would be now to think of all the things, think about what brings you joy and focus on those things. We have a comment here from Elle Laverne Major. She says, well done, Monique. I am happy to be your client. Oh, yes. That is my boss from Royal Bank. I remember when I won the Royal Performance um, Award. In fact, she just sent photos to you. It was just so exciting. And she was so excited to announce that one of our, I think we had dressed up as um, sailors for the Columbus. You remember it was quincentennial or something like bicentennial? Quincentennial, 1492, so it was 1992. And we had dressed up as um sailors and i remember when i um won the award and she was making the announcement you know we were all there in front of the bank and she was like and one of our own sailors will be going on a seven day cruise and is now a royal performer <laughs> but it was yeah, such a good you, time for everyone who worked with mrs major you knew that to, to get her excited to that level or oh, that meant a whole lot all right, yeah. Anna Moss is saying, thank you so much for this presentation. Personally, I've been greatly encouraged. Thank you, Mrs. Glinton, for your presentation and for being transparent and showing the importance of adaptability, adaptability and perseverance. I yes. needed it. My question, what's next for Customs Creation 242? You know, the sky is the limit. That's what I want to say. We don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. Um, and the one thing that I'm always going to try to do is be adaptable. So for right now, I still am serving my clients. I'm still delivering the boxes. I am still making soaps. Um, I am um, pouring candles. I'm still doing the things that I love. Um, Maybe not in my studio. Oh, one of the things I had to mention, 
when I was growing my business, I didn't have a dedicated space. And as you can imagine, I had these tools. I didn't want to leave them outside. I didn't have a shed. So my tools after I was finished came in the house with me in my living room. I had my table saw, my saw, my, my, my power tools, drill and everything. And I remember my husband, he's like, now listen, this is a house. This is not a, a workshop. You know what? You need your own space. And so I remember I said, well, okay, well, what if I, if I could get $10,000 worth of sales, can you think I could just create, have my own space? Because you know what? I really don't want to have to be lifting this table saw out every time in any event. And within a year and a half, I had my own space. I converted um, a 40 foot container into my workspace, complete with AC, complete with full bathroom. It's a showroom as well as my workspace. And so that is where I go and I do my work. Um, but as for like what you said, I think I'm just going to wait and see. I'm going to continue what I'm doing and just continue to be open to what my clients want, my customers want, and just go from there. Okay, another comment. Good evening. This series is truly a blessing, inspiring and motivating. As Dr. Miles Monroe said at given times, your day job is what you should use to pay the bills. But yes. what you do in the evenings or whenever you get off from that job, use that off time to focus on creating wealth. Yes, definitely. There's a question. Does she see herself building cabinets in a new home or does she specialize in certain aspects of carpentry? Um, I have built cabinets already. I needed to refurbish my bathroom and decided that no, I was not going to let anyone do it for me. So I built my bathroom cabinet. I have built indoor furniture. I've built TV stands, my foyer table, my mirror. I have a wonderful picnic um, table outside now, a new one outside. Um, I have my built in now, the, the, the outdoor room that I wanted, I have now created. So um, I can do those things. And, you know, maybe one day my husband will let me get a house so that I can build some of those things in it. <laughs> Someone says, well done. I am an extremely satisfied client. That's Angela Burroughs. You um, have a question here. This person is asking, do you really, really like being a carpenter? I love it. I love it. That brings me joy. And you know, it's not so much just building, it's the joy that I see when my clients are happy. When I take a box, I create, take something that I've built with my hands and the client, the purchase, the person who is purchasing this gift to give to someone else is so excited about what they're giving. I mean, what more can you ask for? I am very happy. Sorry, I saw a question here. It's asking, what is your next dream build? And as you think about that, I also want you to go back. Um, you said that you were afraid to handle power tools before you got to BTVI. So mm -hmm. you know, tell us what your next dream build is. But I want you to see if you can think about specifically what it was that happened at BTVI that gave you the confidence uh, so that you would no longer be afraid to use those power tools. The class, that class, that Carpentry 101 class, um, the instructor spent a lot of time going over how to use the tools, how to use them safely. I, I mean, I wasn't afraid of a drill but I was afraid of a saw. I mean, you can cut your fingers off, you know? So he took the time to show us how to install a blade properly, how to properly handle the saws, the fact that you needed to wear gloves, you should always wear um, eye protection. By the way, mine was pink. I had on my pink safety glasses, um, but that class just, being able to work with the table saw and not be afraid um, truly was, I think, you know, sometimes when you are going to do something new, 
you start a tool, you, you start with a tool, you're not sure of how to operate it. So there's a lot of fears there. He took all of that away. So the entire class we safely use, and he didn't just show us the tools and said, okay, um, you know, this is the tool. We had time on those tools. So like I said, I, I had no fear. He took the fear away. Um, as for my next build, um, I know what it is that I want to build. I have two large dogs, two beautiful dogs, a Roddy and a Husky that live inside with us. And one of the things I want to build is a dog house, but not a regular dog house, a very large eight foot dog house where they're able to go in um, two sides that I can literally stand in with an A roof, a gable roof. And for that, I need to learn how to build the roof rafters so that I can build a roof, put the tar paper on and shingle it. But that's my next large build for me personally, at least. Okay. So someone's laughing at you and said pink goggles with pencil in her hair. That's me. That's listen, me. Listen, you said something else. Uh, you said, um, when you walked into the class later on during the session, the instructor came over and wanted to know, are you sure you're in the right place? Yeah. So what do you say to females? What do you say to mature students? What do you say to people like you who had this stellar career or who may even have a stellar career somewhere else and they decide to make this leap? How do you get them or what do you say to them to get them to stay on course? and not be put aside when people make such comments. Just go and do it. Just go and do it. Have the courage. Like I said, find a story or find someone that you can see or remember that encourages you to take the leap. And for me, it, like I said, it was my dad because at 57, he was starting a new career. And I'm like, if daddy can do that, I'm sure I can do that. Now, mine was different. I was a female going into a classroom with young boys. Young, the oldest of them was a year older than my daughter. I was about to be a grandmother, you know? But I walked into that class very, very nervous. And I'm like, why are you afraid of these little boys? I mean, your children are older than these. But you know, I, it was something completely new, but I, I decided this is what I wanted. I mean, that fire that was inside of me was burning so bright. There was nothing else for me to do but to go to BTVI. I would not have been satisfied. These BTVI people on this call, they always looking for another student. Someone said, it looks like we have our first student for the next roofing class. These people are ruthless, you know, they are ruthless. So my next question, were you, were you ever conflicted? So you dress up every day and went to this job, but then you knew that you really got your passion from working with your hands was there a time that you was that you were conflicted um no not really because like I said I went to work I had a nine to five job so fortunately I was off at five o'clock maybe six o'clock um and then I had the rest of the evening I mean I was not one to go home and and sit in front of the TV and after work, that's the, the end of it. I didn't grow up that way. Like I said, my parents, you got home from work and they were doing something else. So I knew that, okay, I have to go to work. Like Pastor Miles said, I have to go to work. So I have bills I have to pay, but or go on the job. But my real work was what I was doing for me, continuing my um, education, just, you know, I remember one of the classes I took was a cake decorating class. I knew how to bake cakes, but you know, I'm a bit extra. I just want to always do things a bit extra. So I took this cake decorating class and every year I made birthday cakes for my kids. One year, my son was into baseball. So his cake was a baseball field with the little men. And, you know, my daughter at the time was into Powerpuff Girls. She had a Powerpuff Girl cake. My other son 
was playing soccer. So he had a soccer ball cake. I mean, it was, I, it was something, it was my outlet, something that I wanted to do. So yes, I went to work. I did what I had to do on my job, but I knew that I had the rest of the evening and I had the weekend to do the things that I wanted to do. Tell me, you know, there's always that straw that broke the camel's back. What was the determining factor for you when you made up your mind, listen, no more debits and credits, no more speaking French, no more seeing any, no more putting on these pumps and putting on these stockings. Listen to me, this is the day. What was the determining factor for you? Well, I think at that point, um, when I decided to leave the bank, there are a lot of things going on. Um, my husband was traveling, so he had um, was in a role that forced him to travel a lot. I had kids who were in, one was taking BGCSE, the other one was taking BJCs, and it was just a lot. I had children that I had to, you know, in the Bahamas, we don't, we drop our kids to school and we pick them up. I was never able to come back to work um, within one hour of lunch. And so it was just so much going on in our family at that time that I said, you know what, Keith, I think um, maybe it's time for me to transition. And we, we had started a family business um, with some other people. And I said, maybe it's time for me to transition because for right now, it's a lot. I have a lot going on managing um, this portfolio of clients. Um, the kids need help. I mean, you know, my daughter would be there, mommy, I needed the potatoes for my class. And I'm like, but Kendira, I am at work. And it was just so much. So we made the decision that, okay, it's best for me to leave. I can transition into managing the family business that also allowed me also to focus more on our family, on our kids and the needs that they had um, at school at that time. And I have one final question for you. What would you say was your biggest takeaway from your entire BTVI experience? What would you say is the biggest takeaway? Listen, I really loved my time at BTVI. I felt empowered. And like I am in going again, I am the only female in this carpentry class. But not only that, I took blue blueprint reading classes, trade and development classes. And I think in the blueprint class, there might've been another female, but in my carpentry class, I was the only one. And I just felt so empowered. I was like, you know what, here I am, I'm a woman and I'm doing big things. I'm gonna go out there. And so my takeaway, I, I don't know. I just felt empowered. You know, I, you know, like how, you know, some people would feel empowered or, or a young woman would feel empowered if she can ride a motorbike. I was empowered because I could use that table saw, that skill saw. So today I have a table saw, skill saw, circular saw, miter saw, scroll saw, every tool you could think of, angle grinder, I have. And, you know, I, it has just empowered me and I just feel like, you know what, I can do it. If you guys can do it, I can do it too. There's nothing you could do that I can't do, except maybe lift the wood. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. And as Dr. Davis is saying, inspiring. Thanks for sharing your story. And I agree with that. And of course, um, we cannot, we cannot not recognize your darling husband, Mr. Keith Glinton. Mr. Glinton yeah. is a friend of BTVI. He and Saul Petroleum would have started a program, a scholarship and mentorship program at BTVI a few years ago. And so Mr. Keith Glinton, we are so proud to have you on the call. And for those who don't know, Mr. Glinton is the head honcho at Salt Petroleum, not only for the Bahamas, but for the entire Caribbean. So while the rest of us were being locked down, Mr. Glinton was being promoted even further. Yes, and so thank you again, Monique. Thank you, Mr. Glinton, for being on this call. Right. And without further ado, I will now invite Ms. Kadrin Carey, a 2021 alumna of BTVI. Awesome. We'll bring the thank yous and the update. 
Good evening, everyone. Miss Morning Glinton, in the words of Roy Bennett, it is only after you've stepped outside of your comfort zone that you begin to change, to grow, and to transform. Thank you for sharing your transformational journey this evening. It was truly inspiring for us to listen and go on your journey with you. We are so very BTVI proud of you. And now on to our alumni updates. Our much anticipated virtual Distinguished Alumni Recognition Ceremony will be held this coming Saturday, October 2nd, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are priced at only $50 and are on sale now. 10 of BTVI's alumni will be recognized and we invite you to join us while we're doing an interactive viewing. Secure your tickets today and you will be eligible for one of the many exciting door prizes and surprises. The dress code is tropical chic. I've already picked out my outfit, so just saying. We invite you to get all dolled up and join us to this exciting ceremony. Contact Lori Tucker at 502-6321 or three for more information. Our summer raffle did take place last week. We thank everyone who participated. Thank you for buying all the tickets and we do have some winners. So we're gonna celebrate the lucky winners. For the fire stick, for that winner, we have Moses Wilson. Winning ticket was 065051 and sorry, 065015. He was from the Freeport. And then he is going to get his prize sent to him. We have Miss Cole and she got the air fryer. Her ticket was 065036. Now we also have Mr. Coldwell Pratt. He won the ductless air condition unit. Everybody was vying for that. I know I wanted that one. And for the 50 inch TV, Michael Pratt, zero, sorry, 657044. The alumni brand event, the alumni branded items, they are finally here. I have my mug here and I will be sipping some tea later on. These are priced at only $10. You can get these at the Fund Development Office. That's 502-6321 or three. We also have the BTVI bumper stickers. These don't only go on your car, they can go on your computers or just have them on your desk to show your BTVI proud. On behalf of the BTVI alumni everywhere, I want to welcome Dr. Linda Davis, VP of the, of the, of the economic, sorry, VP of the academic. I'm sorry. I want to welcome Dr. Davis, the VP of Academic Affairs. Oh, sorry, Academic Affairs. Um, and we want her to know that we are happy that she's here at the at BTVI. Finally, we're calling all of the alumni. Do you want any assistance with writing your resume? If so, please send your resume to resume at btvi.edu.bs. If you also want assistance with resumes being placed at the Department of Labor's portal or with BTVI's job placement pool, then you can contact the Office of Student Affairs. They are happy to assist. Their number is 502-6311. These have been the alumni events for the month of September. Please feel free to contact us at alumni at btvi.edu with your comments and recommendations. Now I send it to Lori Tucker for the wrap up. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening on this exciting, informative, distinguished alumni speaker series. I mean, she was off the rick to scale. She taught us how to be encouraged that no matter what happened in life, you get up, you get back, and you 
in order to win, we have to learn to adapt. And that was so amazing that she has stories similar to other persons and is very relatable that no matter what happens, you can always get back up on the horse and ride and come out strong like she has. And I would like to thank Mrs. Glinton so much for the encouragement that she has given all of us here on this platform. And for persons who are on this platform this evening, first five persons that call into the office tomorrow, you can get a distinguished alumni ticket for $25. So come out, show up and show off, put on your pearls and all your tropical sheep wear and beat me there because I will be here and you have to make sure that you look good, pearls and whatever makes you happy. Thank you so much for joining us once again in our distinguished alumni speaker series. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's the end of this month's series. I look forward to seeing you real, real soon next month. Have a good evening.